Hey, Shelly, this is Governor Brian Kemp. Whether it's for three hours a night or two, you keep up the good fight and keep telling the full story. Always good chatting with you. Chop on, my brother. Hey, everybody. Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones here encouraging you to listen to my good friend, Shelly Winters, on his new two-hour time slot. I know that's not a lot of time to be with Shelly, but if there's anybody who can get us the most relevant news of the day, on WSB, it's our good friend Shelly Winter. Hi, Shelly. I talked to you oh, yesterday. Oh, good. You are fantastic. Thank you. Yes. A great host. Show is great. Listen to his show. Absolutely. 95.5. Y'all to give us what we need. Hey. Our freedom of speech. Hey, everybody. It's Friday. Yes, it is Friday. I'm so happy. We've got a lot to talk about tonight. But so this morning, good friend of mine, shout out to our uh, Marcus Williams, Marcus owns, um, oh man, I can't remember, uh, ah, Nubian Bookstore. Oof, boy, I almost missed it. A uh, good friend of mine, Marcus Williams, he owns Nubian Bookstore on the south side. And uh, every now and then, I got really good friends around who send me stories every day, right? Magic Mike and I, Magic Mike's the producer of the Shelly Winter Show. And Magic Mike and I talk throughout the day about what we're going to do, what we're going to talk about. Hey, did you see this? And then I have a bunch of what I call Magic Mike associate producers. These are people who have been listening to me for many, many years, and they send me stuff. Hey, I got to see this. Hey, did you see this? And there's a bunch of them. And I appreciate all of you and in this particular case I was watching the news this morning and uh, 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 um, my friend Marcus sent me this Twitter uh, link of Reggie Jackson um, in uh, Rickwood Field in, in baseball um, Major League Baseball had made history uh, San Francisco versus St. Louis and since the death of Willie Mays they played uh, the first game at Rickwood Field and the Rickwood Field was the location uh, in Bur it's located in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, and it used to serve as the home to the Negro League's Birmingham Black Barons, and so that's why Major League Baseball made a decision on a dime to do this. Right? Great, great, great thing that baseball did. So leading up to the game, they had uh, the host Alex Rodriguez, Reggie Jackson, David Ortiz, and uh, Derek Jeter. Right. And um, leaning over, Alex Rodriguez basically said to Reggie Jackson, you know, if it wasn't for you and Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, guys like me, David and, and Derek, we wouldn't be here. And so he said, what was it like? That was the question. What was it like? Now, this clip we're going to play is Reggie Jackson in its entirety. It's about two minutes, 45 seconds. But I want you to listen to it, and then we're going to talk about it, okay? We don't normally play clips this long, but I, I, we, you can't cut this up. It does, you know, you can't. We tried. Hey, let's cut. No, it, it makes no sense. It does, it does not do justice to the clip. So it's about 2 minutes and 48 seconds. I want you to hear this is Reggie Jackson returning to Rickwood Field in Birmingham, Alabama, tell, answering a question from Alex Rodriguez, what was it like? Alex, Alex, when people ask me a question like that, it's like coming back here is not easy. The racism that I played here, when I played here, the, the difficulty of going through different places where we traveled. Fortunately, I had a manager and I had players on the team that helped me get through it. But I wouldn't wish it on anybody. People said to me today, I spoke and they said, you think you're a better person. You think you, you, you won when you played here and conquered. I said, you know, I would never want to do it, want to do it again. I walked into restaurants and they would point at me and said, the can't eat here. I would go to a hotel and they say, the can't stay here. We went to Charlie Finley's country club for a welcome home dinner and they pointed me out with the N word. He can't come in here. Finley marched the whole team out. Finally, they let me in there. He said, we're going to go to the diner and eat hamburgers. We'll go where we're wanted. Fortunately, I had a manager, Johnny McNamara, that if I couldn't eat, if I couldn't, thank you, if I couldn't eat in the place, nobody would eat. We'd get food to travel. If I couldn't stay in a hotel, they'd drive to the next hotel and find a place where I could stay. Had it not been for... Raleigh Fingers, Johnny McNamara, Dave Duncan, Joe and Sharon Rudy. I slept on their couch 
three, four nights a week for about a two, month and a half. Finally, they were threatened that they would burn the, our apartment complex down unless I got out. Again, we're listening to Reggie Jackson last night on Baseball Tonight describing what it was like to play in Birmingham, Alabama when he was in the minor leagues. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. The year I came here, Bo Connor was the sheriff the year before. And they took base minor league baseball out of here because in 1963, the Klan murdered four black girls, children, in 11, 12, 14 years old at a church here and never got indicted. It, it was, they were from the Klan. Life magazine did a story on them like they were being honored. It, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. At the same time, had it not been for my white friends, had it not been for a white manager and Rudy Fingers and Duncan and Lee Myers, I would have never made it. I was too physically violent. I was ready to physically fight some. I'd have got killed here because I'd have beat someone's ass and they'd have, you'd have saw me in an oak tree somewhere. Reggie, I, 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 well, I, I can't even imagine. It's awful. That was Reggie Jackson talking about his time in Birmingham, Alabama in the minor leagues. Powerful, powerful story. Powerful story. But what makes it so powerful is not the obvious hatred that he faced and him telling these young players, basically what he's telling the Rodriguez and the David Ortiz's and the Derek Jeter's was, this is what we faced to play the game we loved. You guys did it. You did it at a high level. You won. You had the accolades of the whole world. This is what we went through to play the game that we loved. They could have quit at any time. Reggie Jackson could have said, man, I'm done with this. I'm going back home. But they didn't. That, that's the first powerful part, right? The second powerful part is how he was talking about good and bad people. There were bad people who wouldn't let him eat in a restaurant. Bad people wouldn't let them stay in a hotel. Bad people called him the N-word. Bad people who threatened the lives of the white people who let him stay in their apartment because he couldn't stay anyplace else. Those are the bad people. We know they exist. And they exist till to this day. Let's not deny they do and don't. But we know they, they're bad people who exist. They're not one race. They're not one party. They're not one group. They're not in one area. They're bad people. But he also points out the good people. The owner, the manager, his co, his his his, play, his teammates, the people in the na in the in the neighborhood or in the community that's took up and stood up for him, and and the most powerful thing about this entire clip, the reason why we wanted to play the entire thing for you, it's important for us to be reminded at all times that there are good and bad people. I like to say there are a holes in the world and there are not a holes in the world. What side of the fence are you going to be on? You can be an a hole. And go through the rest of your life being an a-hole with a bunch of other a-holes and just go through life. Doesn't mean anything good or bad. It just means you're an a-hole. That's it. And they're good people. They're nice people. You pick a side. But I thought this was something good to start with uh, on tonight's show because it was such a powerful testament to what these players, the Willie Mazes, the, 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 the Jackie Robinsons, the Reggie Jacksons, I've, never, I've been a Reggie Jackson fan growing up in New York since I was 9, 10 years old. I have never heard that story. Never heard that story. And to hear that man tell that story, we had to start there. Because at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, there are good people and there are bad people. You can decide what side of the fence you want to be on. Your party affiliation doesn't make you a bad person on either side. Your race doesn't make you a bad person on either side. Your occupation doesn't make you a bad person on either side. You either know you're a good person or a bad person. Do you treat other people with fairness? Do you smile? Do you say hello to everybody? Do you not judge people because of who they love or what color of their skin or what religion they are? Do you just are you a good person? Period. The Shelley went to show. We'll be right back. 4487207501800 WSB